Today on the Cool Games, uh, we're going to be talking about CCL. That's right. CONCACAF Champions League. That's right. Clubs getting left out of Champions yeah, League. Uh, yeah, you wish you could be in CONCACAF Champions League I, right about now. Hey, yo, Man City, come to Costa Rica with us <laughs> if you want to see a Champions League. We that's, go to Costa Rica. That's right. We're going to be talking to Luke Moore of the Football Ramble. A little, let us know about what's yeah. going on with Manchester City a little Absolutely. bit. Uh, so all this and more today on the Cool Games! <laughs> Yeah, baby! Yes, yes, yes. Hello, welcome. All right. The energy is here. We're excited. We're getting closer and closer to... Uh, the camera. <laughs> We're going to be all up in you. Okay. We're going to have to wipe the camera down. Because I'm on... Wait a minute. Anyway. <laughs> Great song. <laughs> Alexa, stop body rolling, please. <laughs> we played that at my wedding. I'm not even playing with you. The whole place was like shoulders, chest. Pants, <laughs> shoes. I was, I was like, Nan, get up here. I wear it. You know what it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. What's uh, up? Uh, hi, my name is Christian Polanco. Yes, it is. I'm Alexis Guerrero. All right, we are the Cooligans. We are your favorite stand up comedians that host the funniest soccer show that you have ever witnessed, we better seen, be. been a part of. I. Okay. We better be. That's why you're watching right now. <laughs> and it's not just that. We also happen to be the gulliest. That's okay? right. Uh, speaking of gulliest, we have, uh, we have uh, some, uh, something to talk about. Yeah, we got a lot. It's, uh, this episode is gullified. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stamp of, of approval. <laughs> right on the screen. You've been gullified. Because <laughs> uh, we have, uh, yes, we have to talk about the word gullified. You know how, like, bit. NYC gives you the scores for the restaurants? Yes. We should have one with a G for this episode. Because <laughs> this is gully as hell. <laughs> yes. Uh, certified G. <laughs> great, great G. Yeah. <laughs> this, this episode has been certified to not snitch. <laughs> so a lot to a lot to discuss uh, today. Uh, again, we're going to be joined by uh, Luke Moore of the Football Ramble. That's right, uh, dude. He took he took the Concord out here just to talk about this. <laughs> That's right, yo. Football yeah. Ramble money is <laughs> yeah. stacks. Yeah, bro. man. How much y'all giving them for their Patreon? <laughs> <laughs> Football Ramble, I think, is also like a religious cult. You know, uh, like a, a yeah. pastor that really <laughs> needs a lot of donations. He walks in and just pats people on the head. <laughs> Luke Moore, yo, they doing five episodes a week. <laughs> so, uh, so we're excited to talk about him, but we have a, a couple of things to announce. I, I think we should start first uh, with the fact that uh, CONCACAF Champions League is starting uh, tonight. Finally, so, we've all been waiting for it. So the first match is between Leon and LAFC. Yeah. Uh, uh, Leon of, of Liga MX, of course. Uh, but we are going to be uh, going to a CONCACAF Champions League game. And buddy, we're not we're not going to wait for the home for the return leg. No, no, no. No, no. I said I want to see that first leg. <laughs> <laughs> Show me that one leg. Yeah. <laughs> we, that's, a, that's a damn good leg you got there. I, it's like an army strip club. <laughs> Show me that one leg. Oh, that's too much. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, I am, I, go. am I a sinner? I, I got to go sell some pies. I'm out of here. No, but well, we can. Well, uh, how long before we get canceled? <laughs> well, they don't watch TV, right? <laughs> they ain't going to see this. <laughs> Yo, you ain't watching this on your I, smartphone. Right? I know that for sure. Right. Uh, <laughs> Your landline? No, we're trying to listen. <laughs> <laughs> Can you listen to podcasts on a landline? Like the, if the wires get crossed, they'd be like, what are they talking? They're talking about us. I thought the show was about soccer. <laughs> I feel seen. Uh, so we are going to a car cap championship game. We, uh, tomorrow morning, we are flying out to Costa Rica. To Costa Rica. Uh, we will be attending uh, the NYCFC match uh, between NYCFC and San yeah. Carlos. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. So That's right. They're playing a saint. <laughs> so Carlito. Here it is. I, I brought my Los... <laughs> my Los Ticos talisman cap. That's right. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited to go to, uh, tomorrow. The game is on Thursday. This looks like you're going to be rooting for the Costa Rican team. <laughs> like, what just, up, baby? I'm a turncoat. <laughs> I'm just rooting for Costa Rica. Yeah. That's all. Uh, I'm rooting for good food as a country. <laughs> so, uh, so that is exciting. So, uh, yeah, we'll be there. If you're going to be in Costa Rica, uh, please say hello. 
hello to us. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it should be really dope. <laughs> I'd love it. Uh, but uh, usually we start the show by showing love to the people who show love to us. So That's we, right. We want to do that. We want all the love. Okay. We want you to send us gifts. We want you to leave good reviews. And, and we if you do that, we thank you by reading your review. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is amazing. This says these guys are hilarious. I can't read the rest of it because this new podcast app. I can't really read, but it says A, dot, dot, dot. I think it's saying Alexis is the best one. I'm assuming that's what it says there. This one is five stars, of course, or we don't read it, okay? We hit report a concern because I'm concerned for you and your bad taste, okay? Uh, it's by Citadel Dell, all right? So shouts to Citadel Dell. He said everyone is on the lookout for new podcasts, especially for fans of the beautiful game. Okay, as seen on TV, commercial starting. Okay. Okay, I like it. Right? QVC, uh, Cooligans are QVC. I'll mess with it. Alexis and Guerreros are two standard comedians who have combined their comedy with their love of soccer to become the funniest soccer podcast on iTunes. And I think he mistakenly, he misspelled the world. He wrote <laughs> iTunes on error. So you might want to, coming from me, you might want to edit. <laughs> love seeing their show on Fubo TV also. Okay, all right? look at that. Okay, my man works in advertising. <laughs> keep up the great work, guys. We absolutely will. You keep up the great work. Thank and you. And sign in iTunes under different an account and leave another review. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We none, none of this has to be legitimate. <laughs> no, baby. Like none of it matters. Uh, we got 617 ratings. Yeah. So we're on our quest for 700. Exactly. And this review, so this was left by Del Schaefer. That's right. Citadel uh, Del Schaefer. Citadel, uh, who, uh, who does the League's podcast, who we, we were just guests on. That's so, right. We uh, check out that uh, show uh, as well. That's uh, right. So if you got a podcast you want us to be a guest on, you better leave a five-star review before we do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the entrance fee. I... Okay. <laughs> So, and join Gully Squad. <laughs> so, uh, so a couple other things uh, to uh, get to uh, before we we uh, start talking about Manchester City. Mm -hmm. um, the oh yes, so uh, word of the day. You you know this uh, uh, words with friends. Words with friends. I you ever heard of this game? I, I do now. Uh, you do now. <laughs> Apparently, they heard of us. Are they hiring? Because you you just lost your job at HQ. Do you need anything? <laughs> Y'all need someone to stand there in a suit yeah. while everyone in the chat calls me what. Whatever the recent fat guy on the news was, like Andy Ruiz Jr., the boxer. I got that one a lot. Is there anything y'all need? How about shut the hell up and get to the game, which I see a lot. I see you You're out pulling there. pulling out for HQ trivia. Which uh, might not be dead. Apparently, the guy who owns it just tweeted out, everybody hold up. Stop crying and filling out your unemployment. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so... Uh, but I think it died. I think it's dead. I think it, maybe they just sent this whole thing to fire me. I, all, and all, they were like, yo, everybody I'm else chill. That HQ Trivia was doing perfectly fine before you started hosting on it. Oh, this that, is 100% so, true. <laughs> so the, I be, show up and they're like, I don't think it's looking good anymore. <laughs> the snack budget seems to be a bit out of whack. <laughs> I did complain. They had a whole snack room. Okay. And I was like, yo, ain't no chocolates in here. <laughs> and they were like, oh, no, it's... Uh, they had an ice... A cold brew machine and a bunch of, like, seaweed snacks. And I was like, what is this trash? I go, get Doritos. And they're like, well, we want to foster a healthy environment. I was like, yo, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, hell, dog. You a app. <laughs> you tell people to sit on their couch and play games, my guy. Get out of here with this. <laughs> this ain't no running app. This ain't no couch to 5K. <laughs> so there was, there was another app, Words with Friends, and a lot of people started tweeting. They saw that I got fired, and they're like, yo, I'm a support. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people started tweeting at us, and they were like, yo, is, where is, is Cooligans doing a, a collab with That's words of right, friends or something yeah. because the word of the day uh, for words of friends was gully gully my guy right there and thank you uh, Benjamin Be Benjamin was a uh, cannon yeah Benjamin cannon one was of one of the one of the 45 people who tweeted, <laughs> tweeted this out. Out. <laughs> also I didn't know y'all had your notifications all set for this game <laughs> this game came out 15 years ago yo <laughs> I was playing this on my Motorola I, I know dude <laughs> I played this on my first Macintosh <laughs> you had to get one of them big old discs that were floppy I think it was called a floppy disk if I'm not mistaken <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> That's the name. <laughs> All right, Detective Guerrero. <laughs> I, I solved the crime. <laughs> boom, boom. Law and Order episode over. <laughs> uh, but no, this was kind of cool, right? Uh, you, 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 I think a lot of times people, they hear us say the word gully, and you know, it came from just a, one of our dumb conversations and, yeah. and this weirdly ironic, uh, you know, our, of, it was a word in our childhood, in our, right. in our youths. In our youths. <laughs> in our youths. Um, <laughs> 
And then people start seeing it. I, I don't know if we have anything to do with it, but all of a sudden the word gully is coming up a little bit it's more. Making, it's making a bit of a comeback. Exactly. To which I say, you're welcome. <laughs> all right. You it's, know. I mean, we're. It's like the gully is the boulder that we're pushing up this yeah. mountain, but it's getting it's getting up there. And then that movie came out in India, that Bollywood movie called Gully Boy. That's right. Right. Which I guess we auditioned for, but we didn't get. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> okay. I mean, at least I could have done a supporting role in right? that film. Maybe a little bit of a walkthrough. <laughs> Maybe a choreographed dance, my guy. We could do a you know, cameo. You know what I'm saying? You think we can? Just a Cuban and a Dominican dude in hoodies hanging out in a ravine in India? <laughs> you think that would look <laughs> out of place, baby? Okay. <laughs> Just Hollywood and Bollywood is, is keeping us out of the industry. <laughs> Y'all don't want diverse representation? <laughs> Mad people in that movie Indian, my guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a lot of soccer to talk about, I promise. <laughs> when we get back after this. <laughs> That's right, baby. We are back. And what an honor it is for us to have someone who's already been on the show before, right? Yes, it's always great uh, to have a, a rerun. Someone that we've approved of <laughs> exactly. being on this show. Heavily vetted. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> said he came on. He was great. We were like, I will right, we'll have you back. <laughs> you did good on your first audition. But we want to talk a little bit about Manchester City. Why not bring in someone who probably talks about it a little bit more than we do? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you're driving, put your hands together for the one, the only of the Football Ramble Daily now. Luke Moore, everybody. Luke, what's up, man? How's it going? <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. I love the little uh, American salute. That's, that's right. <laughs> You're married to an American, so you understand <laughs> how to salute an American. <laughs> it's all about respect. It's all about respect. <laughs> Talk to, uh, talk to me a little bit about what the sort of what the news cycle has been like in uh, in England because w a lot of people talk about it here, but mostly on Twitter and Instagram. What's it been like to be in the football world out there while all this Manchester City stuff is happening? Well, it's been pretty quiet because no one in the UK really cares about <laughs> soccer or football. So <laughs> no, I've had to really dig around to find some stuff on this, you know. <laughs> no, it's been dominating everything. It's been very, very big in the, in, the, in the news and the sport, of course. It's kind of one of those stories that's crossed over into, into hard news as well as just sport news. So it's been big, yeah. Is it, um, is it something where, uh, like, how happy are the other supporters of the other clubs that this is happening to Manchester City? <laughs> how happy are United fans? <laughs> I think, I think we could safely say there's been a certain amount of schadenfreude about it. You know what football fans are like. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's been. I think it's been warmly received in certain parts of Manchester. I would suggest. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, I, I don't know how much you guys, how much your your viewers know about it. Would you want me to give you a synopsis, or do you want me to, to run run it down? Yeah, what's that, happened? That, or that would be great. That? Yes, please. Yeah, because we've mostly been making jokes. Okay. So it'd be nice <laughs> if we get some real information. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what I do. I mean, I think you must have you must have fallen a short getting guests on this because I mean we spend most of our time making jokes too. So <laughs> listen, what, what's what's happened is that um, they've been Manchester City have been found to be in breach of financial fair play regulations, which was um, put in by UEFA to stop um, Manchester City spending to and, stop <laughs> Manchester City <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, to stop to stop Manchester City personally because when UEFA <laughs> went there once they had like a really below par pizza and they said it's just not acceptable it's not acceptable they've got to get out of this competition <laughs> these are facts yeah. I want everyone to know this yeah get out of here yeah. what are you doing to get, forget it get yeah. out of here uh, no and so and so they 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 in November 2018 a German newspaper called Der Spiegel um, published a load of emails that were internal emails from Manchester City talking about how they were getting their sponsorship money. And it's been deemed by UEFA that, um, that, the, that they weren't being truthful in their submissions financially between 2012 and 2016 about where the funding for their sponsorship came from. Now, what, that, what that's meant is that they've been in breach of financial fair play regulations. There was an investigation by uh, the UEFA kind of, they call it the... Um, the CFCB, it's kind of the investigation board around financial uh, irregularities, I suppose. And they, they found them in breach of those regulations, fined them 30 million euros, so about $30 million, and banned them from the Champions League for two seasons. Manchester City have said they're going to appeal. So the next thing it'll do is it'll go to the court for arbitration for sport, which is the highest body, I think, in Europe that can rule on it. And once that's been ruled on, it's done. 
And isn't this technical? I have two questions. One, isn't this technically a felony uh, to uh, sort of uh, cook the books, if you will, in England? And two, what the hell is that thing behind you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, OK. So I'll, I'll do the second question first. <laughs> I bet uh, the other one. Yeah. Look, this thing here. I'm at a friend's house at the moment. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> I mean, it's freaking me out, What's man. What's the G about? That's gully. It's, it's, gully. it's, it's for Gully. It's, it's, a, it's, it's telling me all the secrets. It's telling me all the secrets in here. Um, and what was, I can't remember the first question. What was the first question? Is it it's technically bad. a it's felony? Bad. And are they in England? And are they not going to get in trouble at home? Well, 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 so what's now being posited is that if UEFA have found them in breach, then the Premier League would be the next um, uh, organisation to presumably pass some kind of judgment on their behaviour and how they've breached financial fair play domestically as well. So there's been talk of um, a call for a points deduction and at the very extreme end of the scale. I mean, let's be honest, you guys, you know Jose Mourinho's coming on this. You know he's getting, he's going in hard <laughs> oh, yeah. straight away. Press conference um, ahead of the Champions League, not even asked about the issue, straight in there saying <laughs> that he thinks that his Man United team should be given the title from a couple of seasons yeah. ago. So everyone's going on them. Um, I think the Premier League will do something. They will act in some capacity. We're not sure what it's going to be yet. Um, but it's it's overall, you know, it's obviously fairly bleak news for Man City. They, they have appealed it. They've said they're going to appeal it straight away. They said that they, they, they have given what they describe as irrefutable evidence to the contrary and that it's a it's been a biased process. I don't know anyone who shares that opinion and I don't know anyone who's seen that apparently irrefutable evidence that's going to exonerate them. So it looks to me like it's done. They're, they're, they're certainly going to be um, facing a severe penalty, whatever the result of the appeal is, because I think it's about 90% that CAS tend to rule on the side of the Confederation in question. And ultimately, Manchester City have agreed to play by the rules of this tournament and the rules are set by UEFA and UEFA have deemed that they've breached them. So it doesn't look good. If, if Man City fans out there are watching or listening and are a bit unclear on the process, take it from me. I have no legal qualifications whatsoever, <laughs> but I'm telling you this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I, I have a, a question. Ahead. Is there any, do you know if there's any precedent uh, ever since financial fair play has been put in place of teams actually being penalized uh, and, and and following through with either a points deduction or anything like this? Has anything... I, I Maybe don't... Rangers is the closest thing. No, there's, there's a couple of precedents. I mean, there is uh, AC Milan in Italy were found in, to be guilty of it. They were then um, kicked out of the Europa League. Um, some people cynically said that they quite liked being kicked out of the Europa League because it was a pain for them and they could concentrate on the league. But nonetheless, they took a, they took a penalty where they um, where they were they were, they were kicked out of the Europa League. PSG have been in um, Paris Saint Germain and France have been in, uh, in in violation of it as well. But they kind of they kind of they they were happy to kind of work with UEFA to try and put it right and therefore avoid a more severe penalty because you've got to remember a key part of this is that UEFA have deemed Manchester City to have not been cooperating with the process and been dismissive and arrogant in their dealings with UEFA and trying to undermine the entire process. And that's why the punishment's been harsher. That's why the punishment has caught the eye of news outlets everywhere. Because in the previous time, Milan were kind of down at here a little bit and they're obviously in Europe's second tier competition and PSG sort of, although they were, I think they faced a heavy fine, but they were they worked with UEFA to avoid a more severe penalty and they were kind of deemed to have done that and to have been um, to be cooperative and Manchester City have done none of that and that's why the, the penalty has been harsher. I think the, the general consensus is that like Manchester City has too much money for this to really hurt them, right? Why not just pay the fine, whatever it is, and walk away? And two, do you think we'll see something like we saw with Rangers where they got dropped to the – when they were in administration and got dropped to the fourth tier? Is that something we could see? Do you think uh, maybe they'll be down there with uh, Pompey? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a dig. That's a low blow. <laughs> Ahead of a crucial FA Cup game. I'm coming back on this show and get some beat Arsenal in the FA Cup, I'm telling you that. I'm gonna, I, I don't care if I have to fly there myself and gate crash away into the studio. I'm coming in. I'm coming for you, Guerreros. I'm coming for you. Polanco, you're all right by me at the moment. Okay. It's yeah. better to be at the devil's side than in his path, all right? Remember that. Um, the Rangers... The Rangers thing is slightly different because they went out of business. They were liquidated, so they had to start again with essentially what was a new company, and they, they had to start back at the bottom. That wasn't, a, as far as I'm aware, that wasn't a financial fair play uh, thing. As, to, as regards your first question about the fine, 
Well, they, they, they more than likely will have to pay the fine, but they're going to fight it first. And they've said um, that they would, I think the, the um, I think it was um, the, the, the chairman of Man City, certainly one of them in the top brass at Man City said that they would rather pay the top 50 lawyers in the world, 30 million pounds or whatever, to fight this for the next 10 years than give UA for a penny. That's kind of the attitude they're going for. But ultimately, the fine isn't a big deal. As you, as you guys have correctly pointed out, they can pay the fine. What the problem is, is being banned from the Champions League. Because if you're banned from the Champions League for two seasons, well, what are your players going to do? They've got a bunch of players who are out of contract in two years' time. They're not going to spend two years not playing in the, in the Champions League. Look at Kevin De Bruyne. I mean, how old will he be in two years' time? He needs to be playing in the Champions League now. So what this does have is ramifications for them on the pitch because their players are going to be restricted uh, from playing in the top-tier competition in Europe, which is essentially the top-tier club competition in the world. So obviously, it's, alarm bells are ringing for the players and their agents as well. I know that Manchester City put, um, um, put uh, a load of messages out to their, um, to their players. There was a team meeting with Pep Guardiola on the Saturday after the ruling on the Friday saying, look, trust in the process. We're going to appeal this. Stick with us for now. But that's not a long-term strategy because I just can't see in modern football how top-level players are going to agree to be out of the Champions League for two seasons if the appeal is unsuccessful. Okay, yeah. I take that as a shot against Arsenal, so we're even. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but so, I always like to be one up, so. <laughs> so, and so it looks like uh, maybe this summer they, there might be this exodus uh, of all these uh, Manchester City players. So, who, yeah, be at least. And right. both of our clubs now have a shot at Champions League. Hey, we're Let's doing go. it, guys. Up the toffees. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Luke, that, Luke, listen, Luke. Everton is a very ambitious shout. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about it. So, Luke Moore, thank you so much uh, for joining us, man, uh, and, and enlightening us on, on what's going on out there in, in England and in Manchester. Uh, uh, yes, make sure you tune into the Football Ramble daily. Uh, great podcast. Why even tell them? They all already do. You guys are the biggest. <laughs> no, we appreciate you. Not Luke. enough of them. Not enough of them. <laughs> uh, thank you again, Luke Moore. All right, we'll be back with more Cheers. after this, everybody. Yo, welcome back. So, uh, thank you again, Luke Moore of the Football Ramble. Luke uh, Moore. Great, great dude. One of my favorite Moors. Yeah. I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> I, s'mores is still number one, but... <laughs> but yeah, he's getting up there. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, so let's, uh, let's bring it back stateside. And talk about why? Why do we? Why does this keep happening <laughs> on Black History Month, no less? I <laughs> know. Come on. <laughs> no, we have to talk about uh, head coach of FC Cincinnati, former, former. Uh, yes, we the news came out today. Uh, resigned head coach Ron Jans yeah, of, of FC Cincinnati. Uh, it, so a couple of days ago, it had come out that he was under uh, it was under investigation uh, a, a racist incident or racial incident You're using a racial slur in the locker room. Correct, uh, and uh, just the, uh, a lot in particular. And and one of the the, the, the original story came from uh, the the Cincinnati Inquirer. Yeah, and it, it it said in particular that there was. Music Music playing, uh, and he was rapping along. He was rapping along or singing along. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know right? what kind of bars he got. Right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe he was trying to hit a tune or something. Okay. He went a little too in. He he over karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta. Yeah. There's certain words in karaoke you gotta skip, my yeah. man. <laughs> Bro, this is why I tell bars you gotta use the radio edit, my guy. <laughs> okay, because it's gonna cause for a weird, you know, yeah. work environment. All right, because uh, you think you won't get duffed out while you got a mic in your hand, you will. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know the company karaoke parties get can get a little weird, real get a little, fast, a little litty. No, so this was uh, uh, obviously, you know. It, it, disappointing. You don't want to see this, especially from uh, coming from uh, really anyone in any MLS coach, especially right. Uh, anyone in a, a position of power, because then it can clearly make the the, the work environment uncomfortable. Uh, also, it's just like you know, uh, with all the racist stuff happening in in the world during soccer. Yeah, the MLS has sort of been able to skirt a lot of this stuff because we we tend to be a much more they, progressive. Yeah, skirt skirt it. Yeah, uh, as Ron, as Ron Young would say. But he would actually say something else, and we're like, no, 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 no. Now, Ronnie boy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, man. It's, so, uh, so, so t this. Uh, but this is like what now. Now racism is rearing its ugly head in our league, especially if you read the comments. <laughs> wow. So there. Uh, I'll, I'll, 
this has been i think for most people we we you know this is not a new issue right for people know yeah uh white white people even if it's in a song uh you probably should not say it because it can cause a lot of problems right it's it, it is a, a, a the, the n-word it is it is a, a complex and difficult thing uh it has a terrible history so like don't be don't get involved in that right it's just like an easy thing it's if you want to rap along to a song that has it in it you have to be skilled enough <laughs> <laughs> to not say that word. <laughs> That's it. So remember, Chris Rock had a sketch a long time ago. He was in a car with three white people, and they were singing along the jig. What's my mother on <laughs> name? And who I'm rolling with, huh? And he turned around, like, and he was driving. He turned to look at everyone. You better not. <laughs> yeah, just like literally the whole FC Cincinnati roster was like, oh, uh-huh. I wonder what he's gonna do right now. Hey, profe, <laughs> <laughs> who you rolling with? <laughs> okay, just want to make sure it's uh, it's a little it's a little quiet on certain. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to make sure the lyrics don't hit as hard. <laughs> so uh, th- uh, th- this been uh, when the investigation first happened, th- I, like, w- look, a lot of people, especially in uh, American soccer Twitter, obviously are going to have fun with it, make a lot of jokes or right. uh, whatever. It is us included. Us included. I mean, us especially. Yeah. Right? We need to know the song. <laughs> we need a- That was the first question. Yeah. Uh, what song was what it? What song was it? Because uh, n- n- like, it better not be like YG. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, you shouldn't even know the lyrics to this joint. You, li- you got to stay off of rap caviar, yeah. my dude. <laughs> nah, man. You went too deep in the catalog. You got to stay pop. Some things are just not for everybody. <laughs> you know? You know what you do? You listen to that song. That ain't for you to be saying. Yeah, okay, you ain't going to rap genius and looking up the lyrics. All right, I'm you t- can't. Don't be driving around Compton. That ain't for you, my guy. <laughs> So, uh, you look, there's it, it, there's a lot but of... Imagine it was like a Taylor Swift song. They're like, the world's not even in that song. <laughs> like, what you do? Yo, you can't be freestyling on these tracks. <laughs> yo, just because there's a moment with no lyrics don't mean that's for you to drop bars, my guy. <laughs> okay, that's called a bridge. <laughs> I, bro. <laughs> you shouldn't have crossed it. <laughs> you know? so, Let the break dancers do their thing. There's a, there's a, look, <laughs> uh, look we, can make a, we can make jokes for hours. <laughs> and this is all we do, okay? But the, the, the serious aspect of it is that uh, look see, the the initial report and this is this is, as I'm talking about this like more reports are coming out so the initial report was saying that a player uh, had told had one filed the complaint and told uh, the coach so Ron Yans that his uh, that that w- it was a word that was unacceptable unex- to use we don't know what player we don't know why we don't know so n- after that th- that came out the MLS Players Association put out a statement saying that that hold up hold up that wasn't <laughs> yeah. That a player did not uh, uh, file a, com- a complaint, right? Uh, and and that that you know that sort of implies that um, it's a way to like attack the player, attack the player by oh, saying like the they, rat- you have a coach. they ratted on or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So um, so it's getting messy, right? Right. The the, the main issue is that they're getting messy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Actually, uh, look, he's having a lot of issues in Barcelona. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he's a huge fan of rap music. And he wants to go to Cincinnati. He's like, yo, my dude, I know how to not say that word. Let me in. Play a coach <laughs> you could be a be an ally anyway. <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> so but it, it, on a serious note yeah it can uh, uh you know having a coach be like that there's been more now more reports are coming out right, right. and saying that he, he made a, a, a another racial statement in regards to slavery on some uh, on a dc trip or something like that now's probably the time to mention that he's also dutch he's he's also dutch but he's but not that's he's like, not an idiot no but like no no dutch means you know full well oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the, what, what happened yeah. with slavery, my guy? Yeah, and, yeah. Christmas is weird yeah. uh, in yeah. Holland. Yeah. <laughs> so so. <laughs> there's a lot of issues. Yeah. And look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's very, it's very, very weird. odd. Uh, so, yeah, th- this is a, a, overall, it's just like a, um, uh, it, it's getting super uh, convoluted, right? right. And, and the resignation, uh, his, he, so he resigned this morning. At first he was suspended, now he resigned. Now he was, so he's officially gone. After Cincinnati, uh, they have, they, they're going back to their interim coach, who I believe is like 29 years old. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, he's like, <laughs> just like a kid. Like, just kids sweating. <laughs> they're like, oh, all right. <laughs> I'll figure this out. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> So, the uh, uh, the the fact that it's getting so uh, c- confusing and right. and I tip, here's look, it's really not that confusing. He messed up. You're gone. What's really upsetting me is some of these trash takes by some MLS fans. They're saying, "Oh, if it's in a song, I'm allowed to." Yeah. Hey, here's what I say. 
Feel free to. <laughs> Just expect a certain repercussion if be... you're around somebody in particular <laughs> and you say that word. Like, you deserve to get popped in the mouth if you say that, or, or worse. Yeah, look, uh, nobody's condoning violence. Well, some of us are. <laughs> but it is... Uh, <laughs> it, it, no one can say that... I they... can hear the producer saying they're okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it. No one can say that they don't know that they, it, the word's history yeah. and, and and the prop the, 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 the not even just the social issues Issues that can arise from casually saying it. Uh, uh, so it, this is a larger conversation for yeah, sure. Not it, something it, we should be doing on a comedy po uh, show or a podcast. That said, you don't say the word. That's it. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, and Ron Yans, Ron Yans should have known better. He's a 60 years old. Yeah. Uh, yes, he 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 he's not like I was saying. He's not an idiot, right? So the the weird thing is that the yeah, he's not stepping off the plane and like, <laughs> <laughs> like did y'all know about this? <laughs> no, everybody knew, no, dog. Everybody knows. Uh, <laughs> And uh, but the resignation kind of and and, and the MLS uh, Players Association statement. It's like yo, stop investigating because he quit. Yeah, it makes it seem like the, a, the working conditions and his behavior at FC Cincinnati might have been worse than that we actually know. And the resignation makes it mean like okay, it's all wrapped up. Right. You know, we don't have to look into this anymore. But it looks like it, it might have been actually worse. And and maybe it's it, it's an example going forward for the other clubs about like how serious an issue this is. Right. And hopefully this is a learning lesson for everyone else. Don't say that word. You don't have the right to. And everyone who has that trash take, stop listening to our show. Stop watching our show. Get out of here. <laughs> also, uh, I hate I hate learning lesson. Just lesson. That's that's the uh, right way. To say it. <laughs> uh, we'll be back after this. <laughs> That's right, baby. We're back. Listen to a little bit of hip hop <laughs> during the break, <laughs> and nothing was said. Right? We just listened. Uh, but that's not the only uh, wild thing that's happened. U.S. We've been talking about this in the past. U.S. Men's National Team a little bit, a little hush. You know what I mean? The yes. whole men's sort of uh, department, if you will, has been real hush when it comes to the women's national team trying to get their equal pay. Yeah. Well, turns out <laughs> they've been just redrafting uh, <laughs> the most gully letter ever sent. Because they by, went in. They went in. They went all the way in. So this is the U.S. Soccer Players Association. Yes. The, uh, they put out a whole, uh, I don't know, I guess this is an open letter? Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's a, a more statement. statement. It feels yeah. like a statement, yeah. They put out a whole thing explaining how they're like, nah, son. Like not amazing. I love how you. That's the whole thing. It should have just said. I nah, love. Son. I love how you paraphrase. You know what I mean? Just I'm reading word for word here. <laughs> but the whole gist of it is like, not only do we think the women should be paid their fair share, they should be paid a heavy amount. Here's all the proof that we don't agree with. Here's what systematically has been done to sort of knock them down. I mean, they went all the way and they kept they kept receipts. Yeah, and they really made uh, they they highlighted the the their talks with U.S. Soccer with with, with the federation on and and how th those negotiations have gone because and they gave perspective as to why the women are in the in the position they were and how they were sort of pitted against. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but it, you sort of just kind of see how how. They, they, it's like they, they have the same enemy, quote unquote. You know, so, so yeah, people yeah. do not know that the the U.S. men's national team and the U.S. women's national team do not negotiate together when they are are, are negotiating their deals. Or with terrorists, which I agree with. Hey, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? A, it's a flat out rule. <laughs> yeah, that, it's yeah. good to have that. You know, just <laughs> Ashton Harris yeah. has been like from day one. I will not negotiate no. with even one terrorist <laughs> or Carlos Guerrero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting platform. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Wait, are they the same? I, know. <laughs> I gotta be. I kind of agree with her stance, though, because America, you know. <laughs> so, but this has been like, uh, like Alexis did just mention. Uh, we we haven't heard much, and Ashton Harris, uh, a, a couple months ago, has been sort of the loudest. To say, Trump at this. Yeah, and say, like, wait, why haven't the men uh, been more supportive? And mm -hmm. this is, not only is this support, but this is also, hey, like, yeah, uh, the, this is what we dealt with uh, when when they were negotiating their deal there. Uh, like pre-World Cup from and 20, players were being sent uh, in. I believe from 2011 to 2018, right. when they were negotiating, like, within that time frame, they were like, no, we, we even we didn't get uh, uh, paid fairly. Right. And, and then when we saw what the U.S. Women's National Team did recently, right. they get 
getting paid. We didn't even want to get paid while we were getting paid, yeah. and they getting paid less. less than that. This is an actual. I'm going to read this word for word. This is actually in the statement. What we believe should happen is simple: pay the women significantly more than our recently expired men's deal. In our estimation, the women were due at least triple what our expired deal was worth in player compensation. We believe the federation should have agreed to a deal directly tied to a fair share of the revenue players generate. This is what should have happened. Based on the entire history of labor negotiations involving the men and women's players of the Federation and the Federation. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Lord. So, so this, this is, is unprecedented. Yeah. So it's it's nice to see yeah. uh, a, a, a statement like this. And I, I think it's uh, they, I saw some people also tweeting this as well, that they were saying like, hey, this is nice. But we also need the players themselves to speak out in this in this manner as well. Uh, and that and that is well, I agree. I think that that almost is that's for promotional use only. This is straight up like nah, yo. Uh, so uh, like we they these are the folks that go to the bargaining table. Yes, this is this is fair. But yeah. I think from you know publicity for, sol sake, for solidarity, yeah, you want to yeah. see that. Yeah, it, it, I think it would be more helpful because again, you do have the Megan Rapinos, the Ali Kriegers, the Ashton Harris's being in front of a camera saying like, "Yo, we're not getting paid fairly," and, and people don't and, have our back, and people don't have our back. So that is, uh, I think, the the extra step. Uh, some of the men's national team players uh, can take, right. but I, but I think there is this weird like fear for, for the men that this will hurt their negotiating uh, leverage if they say if they're outspoken. Well, that's that cat's out of the bag now. Exactly. <laughs> so the players themselves should be like, "Yo, if if my union is already speaking like this, yeah, you know, I should feel a little bit more comfortable." Hopefully, this helps the players speak out more as well. Yeah, everyone should. Yo, I mean, after this, the gauntlet's been dropped, my guy. What are you waiting for? So, yeah. Josie, feel free to tweet whoever your handlers are telling you not to go for it. So, um, uh, okay, so we'll be back with more after this, everybody. Okay, welcome back. So... Um, more U.S. soccer stuff, more more news in general. Well, this is good news, though, right? <laughs> so, well, for some, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's start with hate in your heart. <laughs> we have to talk about Jay Berhalter because he uh, just a couple weeks ago, oh, no, that's about, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. about two weeks ago, he announced uh, that he will um, be leaving the job as a, a VP. Well, not VP. What? He's the CEO. CEO of. Uh, CCO. CCO of, of U.S. Soccer. Uh, there he is, uh, Jay Berhalter, brother of uh, Greg Berhalter. Some Jersey's finest. <laughs> okay. Uh, not everyone would agree on that. <laughs> yeah. It's just, the you know, the, the soccer is... Hold on. Did he help him, his brother, get a job? So, <laughs> so, so you know how we do in Jersey? Soccer's royal family. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. The Berhalter of the North Jersey Ball <laughs> Berhalters. <laughs> so, Jay Berhalter uh, announcing that he is uh, leaving yeah. the job and... Uh, and uh, uh, CCO is uh, arguably, uh, you know, one of the top positions in U.S. soccer, one of the most influential, uh, has his hands in everything when yeah. it comes to the, the, the team itself, uh, how the team is marketed, uh, the, the uh, television deals, Ticket everything. Ticket prices, the whole the nine. Ticket, everything. He does it all. Um, now, I think... So a lot of people didn't even want him to have the to, the the conflict of interest that was the fact that the CCO and the head coach of the U.S. men's national team were brothers. Bro brothers. Yes. A lot of people had an issue with that. Yes. Uh, and and showed like oh. some people said that Jay should have been disqualified. Greg should have been disqualified from potentially going for the job because of Jay. Yes, uh, and then we all saw how that worked out. Yeah, uh, and, and then Jay took that and he shredded it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah. Yo, I'm the CCO, dude. I'm not interested in all this paperwork. <laughs> you know, I hear a lot of opinions that don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I make I make my own rules. But no, uh, so he is announcing that he is leaving the job, uh, right. and and I, I in I think about three months or something yeah. like that. So. Uh, the weird move here is why, one. Why is he leaving? Right. Uh, and then, and then uh, it's not like he can go be the CCO of the other federation. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, questions about why he's right. leaving, and uh, one might be that he. I, I believe that the CE, CEO job yeah. that was I, I think it's it's needing to be filled. Mm -hmm. um, 
he is he is not in contention for that job. Right, they were told that ain't for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so tell him down, hey, this ain't for you, yeah, Jay. Yeah, nah, <laughs> dude. How many C suite jobs do you need, <laughs> dog? So uh and and he just was like, All right, you're not gonna you're not gonna give me the job, then I'm then I'm bouncing. So yeah. is this do you think this is a a, a positive move? Like did did, did Jay have uh, was he good at, at his job and this is gonna be a, a negative thing or is it we're gonna find somebody else and it'll all be fine? I think the fear is, I you know, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. I'm worried about who becomes CEO because it seems to me like from what we're seeing is that a lot of the numbers are sliding to to like negative numbers. Less people are going to games. Ticket prices are becoming more expensive. Yeah. You know, these friendlies seem like they don't matter. There's a lot of ill will towards a lot of the men's national team matches, and there's a lot of excitement around the women's national team matches. And it doesn't seem like that on the men's side that that's being solved. And it seems like that's a prime primary concern right now for who becomes CEO is how to write that side of the ship. Yeah, I, 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 I think this is an opportunity for U.S. soccer to kind of rebrand itself to some degree. And, and that's the funniest thing ever said on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you it. think that's gonna happen all of a sudden? <laughs> but I'm just saying this. Oh thing. my God, look at that tiger! His stripes are changing. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Hey, kitty! Yeah. <laughs> look, you cute, cute uh, kitty! Look at this! <laughs> no, you wrong. No, I'm dog. just saying. Look, I'm, if if in a perfect world, yeah, in yeah. a perfect world, yeah. But, have you been paying attention? <laughs> so you would hope, uh, but I wanted to point out one other thing real quick about the the. The U.S. soccer general meetings, the USSF general meetings, were it just happened this weekend. And I know most, for the most part, this is boring stuff. Nobody wants to hear about like, hey, what are you gonna talk about? New the budgets yeah, for yeah. U.S. soccer. Until but, a couple old white guys got up and started finger wagging. <laughs> but I, I, I say, and I deploy this to everybody. I'm saying like, pay attention to this stuff. If you're a, a fan of American soccer, a lot of this stuff, a lot of these people that go to these general meetings are all like volunteers. Yeah. If you want, or maybe like, you suffer from insomnia. Oh my god. <laughs> What a <laughs> great, what a great time! But this is how you learn about uh, how to change the sport in this country. Uh, and there was a a speaker at the general meetings that got a lot of publicity because he 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 re he said the wrong things, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said the thing he, he clearly doesn't have a Twitter account. Someone gave him a list of don'ts, and he was like, <laughs> "All right, I'll read that." <laughs> so this was uh, Stephen Flamhaft, yeah, uh, which is a, a, a surname I never thought I'd ever rolls say. right off the tongue, <laughs> along with a little bit of phlegm. <laughs> so. So Stephen, Flam so he he got up uh, at the general meetings and and spoke, and this is like Carlos Codero's there. Everybody from uh, U.S. Soccer, uh, right. at the board, everybody. The volunteer. He basically gave you the drunk uncle speech at a wedding, yes. and he went in on the U.S. Women's National Team that is beloved. Yeah. He said, and for the, celebrating well, against Thailand. Yeah, he, I'm pulling out just a couple quotes that were, uh, were from uh, Bo uh, Dur. Yeah, uh, he's Dur at Dur Sport. He and he he highlighted these. He go. He he was talking about their sportsmanship, and he said. Uh, that they were humiliating their opponents and they, they would boast and preen when humility is in order. What's missing here is the respect that should be shown. No, what's Uncle. missing here is the definition for the word preen. <laughs> Don't you dare come in here with your 1920 <laughs> <laughs> English. So and if and then people were started looking at this guy out. Stephen Flamham played for the U.S. men's national team. And he lost like 10 nil, 13 nil in the 60s. Yeah, so this is PTSD, <laughs> right? That's what this is. He's like, I feel for those Thai women. My man's like, you have any idea what it's like to get your 10th goal scored on you? Have some respect. You, you, only yeah. me and those yeah. Thailand women yeah. understand. Maybe some of those Thailand players <laughs> had to go home and their moms looked at them and said, you should have been a bus driver. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. <laughs> and then uh, Heather O'Reilly, uh, who is uh, who was there as well, uh, also did defend, and she basically like threw the, sh the proper shade yeah, yeah, on yeah. Mr. Flamhaft. Yo, first of all, pregnant Heather O'Reilly. That's right. Pimento she, cheese that stealing is, that, Heather O'Reilly. <laughs> she's, she's changed her name to <laughs> pregnant Heather O'Reilly. Came up and was like, <laughs> Flamhaft. <laughs> You've been Flamhaft. Yeah, hey, uh, uh, I'm gonna flame you in half, my G. <laughs> so uh, yes. Uh, it, it just ain't, ain't a lot going on in U.S. soccer, so please pay attention to it. All right, we'll be back, everybody. Baby, we are back.
And uh, let's talk a little bit about Barcelona because apparently they went to the school of Newark. You know what I mean? Yes. Right? Intra yeah, everybody gets in. <laughs> Nobody gets out. <laughs> <laughs> Two men enter. One man leaves. So... Apparently, the, an article was put out uh, in in a in Bleacher Report. A Bleacher Report, but yes. it was referencing uh, a, it's in Catalan, so I don't know how to how to read it, but it's like it's like que te jugues. All right. <laughs> Whoa! I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but my tongue exploded. So <laughs> someone call an ambulance. But uh, Catalan, why still speak this language? No one else does. Um, stop handing me menus in it. All right. No one. I don't know what it, I don't know what this means, dog. <laughs> I, I came here for your meats. <laughs> Just bring it to me. Anyway, they uh, apparently have suggested that uh, Barcelona has hired a firm to put out uh, social media accounts that would praise their front office, yet start hitting against uh, Messi, Puyol, and like two other players, okay. and start putting out negative sort of um, rumors about them. Yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, uh, you, I, you sort of seen stuff like this before. Right. Because I remember I was listening to a podcast from uh, Miko Grimes. Uh, right. Miko Grimes, uh, wife of uh, cornerback, Tampa Bay Buccaneers cornerback, right. Brent Grimes. Also, ride or die. Ride or die. <laughs> Without a doubt. Without a doubt. <laughs> right. And she was talking about how whenever uh, players were, like, say, negotiating uh, contracts with their teams. Right, right, right. The, the teams themselves. Well, this is her theory because stuff started leaking about the player negative. Yeah, yeah. So, to hurt that value. Exactly. You know what I mean? So this is not, like, particularly unheard of. And we're starting to see uh, more stories, especially recently, about Messi, like, being unhappy or being critical. Or... I think I'm starting to think Barcelona is the one that put out that video of the dude playing the Messi drum and Messi. Messi just not knowing what to do, <laughs> just standing there really uncomfortable. He's like, oh, yeah, like he's off yeah, beat. It's it's a, like, yeah, if you haven't seen this video, it, it is, is uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you chilling. Yeah, you, you, you worry about Messi. When <laughs> you were like, I think he had a senior Mecca. <laughs> I, I think he's never heard music before. <laughs> Yo, my man, I don't think his head knows what to do when music is playing. Because he is uh, like bobbing around like a bobblehead. <laughs> yeah. uh, he doesn't know how any of this works. Wildly uncomfortable. <laughs> Messi, like, and this is why Messi, like we we all uh, revere him for being such a great player. But right. socially, he is like, even Maradona has always been the I best mean, socially. I mean, almost as good socially <laughs> as he was on the field. But Maradona, oh, very vocal. He's always been like, Ma Ma uh, Messi, greatest player, the worst like, no personality. Yeah. He just straight up roasts him. Yeah, I mean, it's Maradona. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you can't even do blow with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> How can I trust him? I mean, you know, we're kinda, I thought we were friends. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm doing blow in front of him, and he looks at me weird. <laughs> right? Oh, why? Because I'm doing it off the table at your house, and you didn't even invite me in? Which, by the way, we still need to talk about. Why didn't you invite me in here? Is it because I'm doing blow in front of your family? <laughs> the kid wants them. You know? <laughs> Allegedly. Right. By the way, there's all characters. Got the commercial. <laughs>